Hiyo everybody, this is Icicle Ferret, and today we're going to talk about some Warframe. And as you can probably tell, I've got me an Octavia. As far as internet uh, timelines go, I'm super late getting this out. Sorry, but I wasn't really feeling so great the last week. But, um, yeah, so I want to talk about Octavia and what she represents to the game. I tried to get some solo footage of me with her in combat. But that didn't turn out so well. Uh, let's just say I'm not the best with control frames, but um, but that's okay because I want to talk about more what Octavia represents in the game rather than her abilities. So, for those of you who don't know, Octavia is a sound-based Warframe, so all of her abilities. Uh, are based off of sound, so mallet, resonator, metronome, amp, all of these are relative to sound. So the more sound you have, the louder you are, the more damage her abilities can do, and it's really cool because also it's not just any sound, but it's the sound that you make. So if I go to here to the appearance tab, I go to the mandacord, I can actually make my own sound, and then this appears in the game. And I don't even want to know from a technical standpoint how they pulled this off, because this this just blows my mind, all of the programming that had to go into this. And this is a song of my own creation, by the way. I know it's, it's terrible, and actual artists can probably do way better than this. But, um, but yeah, this just gives you complete... Well, not complete creative freedom, but this gives you a ton of creative freedom. And it's actually the Mandacord itself that has me more excited than Octavia. Because what what the Mandacord represents is additional breadth of gameplay. Now, you might not know what that means, so I'm just going to tell you that there are two similar t game terms here. One is depth of gameplay, and one is breadth of gameplay. Now, Warframe already has some pretty good depth of gameplay. And what I mean by that is Warframe is a game about you going out and killing armies and armies and armies of, of uh, enemies. And the, the depth of the gameplay that allows you to do that is, is, pretty, is pretty good. It's not, I mean, it's, it's not the best I've ever seen. But look at this. We've got some you know, 85 different primary weapons. You have 78 different secondary weapons. 115 melee weapons, plus all the sentinels, the companions, and the additional archwing stuff. And this is all, all of this stuff can be modded with all of your different, different mods. And I don't even know how many mods there are. There's got to be over 100 of them. Let's find out. So every single one of these mods is unique. So yeah, I've got, I've got 6,120 total mods. And 5,000 of them are duplicates. So yeah, so about a thousand... I think, eh, probably closer to 700 or so. 600? But still, 600 different mods, if I'm doing my math right. I'm probably doing my math wrong. I'm probably going to get some really, really angry people in the comments saying, your math is wrong. But that's okay. I was never really good at math, and I have no shame in admitting that. But yeah, so all of that is depth of gameplay, because it allows you to not only take a weapon, all of which are individuals, by the way, even the ones that are just variants of others. Like, the boar prime here is a variant of the original boar. And while they're similar, they are, they do have their differences. They have different, they have a different combination of the impact puncture slash. They have a different fire rate. Every single weapon is unique and different. And that's just amazing in itself that they're able to do that over, what was it, 78 some odd weapons? Yeah, that's phenomenal. And each one can be modded differently such that even if you're using the same weapon as somebody else, it's not going to have the same stats because everybody's going to mod it differently. And that's just an incredible depth to your game that not a whole lot of games have. This this is phenomenal depth. And then you've also got your different Warframes and your different companions. And all of this, like I said, is depth of gameplay. But the reason it's depth and not breadth of gameplay is because it's all centered around 
killing your enemies. It's all centered around being a one man or one woman walking army. And what breadth of gameplay, breadth of gameplay you get more in more of like your RPGs where, yeah, there's the main storyline, but there's also chocobo racing, there's also farming, there's also collecting every single thing in the bestiary. That's breadth of gameplay. And a game like, uh, well, Final Fantasy, a game like Fallout, Skyrim, those games really thrive on having breadth of content over depth of content. Now, they have depth of content, too. I've played Fallout 4, and the, the, modding, the modding system for the weapons there is insane. Um, <laughs> that's all I can say on that one. That's been pretty deep. It's really simple user interface, but just the level of complexity and the detail that you can get into that, that's, that's breadth of content. And so that's, that's the basic difference between breadth and depth of content. And what makes Octavia so revolutionary in Warframe is not really her abilities. I mean, she's a control frame, so she's along the lines of Nyx or maybe even Hydroid, you know. And she plays very similarly. And, well, I, in my hands, she dies very similarly, but that's just because I'm not very good at control frames. But it's the Mandacord that is the most impressive part because it adds, like I said, that depth of gameplay. It's it's something else in Warframe that you can do, but it isn't directly related to killing your enemies. So you can come in here and you can create your own little songs, get creative, and there have been nights, like this entire song, I call this Pebbles in the Sand. Every day I come on here and I tweak it and I play with it a little bit, just because I can. And You know, some nights it's like 2 in the morning and I'm super tired and I don't really f want to engage my brain cells too much so I'll just come on here and I'll listen to this and I'll feel the beat and I'll think well that might it might be cool if I made this little tweak or if I made this little change to it and it just it just gives me another reason to play Warframe and of course that'll probably wear off over time as Octavia loses her no what's the word I'm looking for but when something's new the novelty of it but you know, even still just for these first couple of weeks that I've had her this has been a lot of fun and like I said, it's 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 added breadth of gameplay, and that is something that Warframe desperately needs. It's it's just I don't want to save my change here, so it's that's the best part I think about Octavia. Really, is is what she represents more than what you can necessarily do with her, because like I said, she plays like a like a pretty standard control frame, and. I'm not even good with control frames, so you're not really going to see much combat footage of me with her because I'm, I mean, I'll pull her out to play with her when she's, you know, when I can, but uh, I'm just not, I'm just not really good with control frames. My best control frame is Hydroid, and that's mostly because I did it out of a challenge uh, rather than because I'm actually good with him. I just, I just wanted a challenge for myself, so I'm like, hmm, I'm going to make Hydroid endgame viable. Um, still don't think I've done that yet, but I'm trying, but... Anyway, back to Octavia. So, yeah, I think she is a step in the right direction for Warframe. I mean, it's it's a little bizarre to have a Warframe that is based off of music, but then again, this is Warframe, and it's also a game where you can kill people with a pirate cannon. I mean, just don't take her too seriously, and it's totally fine, is what I'm trying to say. And... Have fun with it. I mean, make up your own songs. I showed you the, the pebbles in the sand that I created, but I also have this other one. And... I wonder how many people actually get that reference. <laughs> I mean, I know you're probably a 90s kid. Heck, you're probably even an 80s kid if you know that song. Um, but that's the Inspector Gadget theme song, as best as I could make it. Uh, like I said, I'm I'm not a I'm not a music person, so as someone who's an actual music person is probably tearing their hair out seeing what I did here. But I just kind of copied the the melody and the the beat of the Inspector Gadget theme song. So that's fun to run around, and it's it's also completely hilarious to kill enemies to this poppy little song that it's from my childhood, but it's it's still fun. And there are a whole 
threads on Reddit and on the Warframe forum dedicated to different songs that people have made. I've, I released this short video of somebody had made the the uh, theme, th theme song for Final Fantasy Chocobos. That was a lot of fun. That made it brought a smile to my face. And I really hope that Warframe, even if they don't... Sorry, Digital Extremes. I really hope that Digital Extremes, even if they don't release them more as Warframes, I hope they continue to add these sort of ancillary things to their games. Like, one of the things that I really want to see is some sort of gardening or cultivation mechanic where you can grow the resources that you need. And we have these extractors, but they're not very interactive. You just kind of, you stick them down. You know, you claim them, oh, look, I just got plastids. I don't need plastids. But anyway, you stick them down on a planet and you have a chance, a randomized chance of getting something from this list of items on the right here. And yeah, that helps you get materials, which helps you build stuff, which ultimately helps you kill more enemies. But it's not very interactive, so I really would like to see some sort of gardening mechanic to, you know, you can grow the materials that you need. Maybe you care for them kind of like you care for your companion. Every day you just go to your water, your pots, and you water them a little bit, and then next thing you know you have alloy leaves to pluck or something along that line. Heck, it would even be nice if you could, instead of selling stuff, like right here I made the Twin Wraiths Vipers, I already have a Twin Race Vipers. I don't want these anymore. My only option is to claim it and sell it for credits, but I don't need any credits. Maybe it would be cool if I had some sort of mechanism where I could take items that I no longer need and decompose them into, I don't know, plant fertilizer or something, and then feed them to my plant and then maybe get something that I actually want out of it. That would be a real cool kind of recycling mechanic. Hi, Shinobi. And... It's stuff like that. Like I can't even think of all the things that really creative people might be able to shove into this game. You know, music. I never imagined that they would put a music synthesizer in this game. I really look forward to seeing what else they can do. Like I said, gardening would be my number one pick. But what if they allowed us to? Uh, I don't. What if they allowed us to make our own actual paintings with bullets? Like we have instead of having bullets, we have a paintball gun. We shoot it at our walls you know, in our dojo or something, that would be fun. Then all of the clan could get in, we could we could uh, shoot it all up, make little drawings, and then take a picture of us all standing in front of it. Stuff like that would just add breadth to the game, and it would really help foster the community, kind of like the the Mandicord did. But I think I'm rambling now. Don't, I sound like I'm rambling, don't I? Yeah, I'm even boring Shinobi. He's falling asleep over there. So, <laughs> yeah. Thanks for listening. Thanks for... For watching my channel. Sorry this was such a short video, especially after I know I skipped my midweek video this week, but like I said, I wasn't feeling well. But I do thank you all for watching, and I will hope to see you next time.